Anne here again. Today I'm going to show my friend Joan how to do an applique. She bought an applique and I bought it also so I could show her from Designs by Juju. I'll have it linked down below for you. I'm not affiliated with them, but just in case you'd like to work along with us. But I'm not only going to show Joan how to do the applique part, I'm also going to show her how to take that file over into Silhouette software so that she can cut it with her machine. I'm using a portrait and I'm going to show how to cut it on my portrait. I'm going to show you how to um, treat the fabric before you do so, so that you can cut with just a regular blade. You don't even need any kind of fancy blade to cut this fabric. So let's get started. Okay, as you can see behind me here, I have open designs by Juju. I love their files. I'm not affiliated with them, but I love their files. And over the years, I've bought quite a few of them. I mean, if we go back all the way through here, let's see how long ago have I been buying these things. Um, some of these were purchased back in 2016. So you can see I've been embroidering for quite a while now. But let's go back to the first page because that's where the file is we're going to use today. And this is the one that Joan is doing. It's called Mr. Winter. And I'm going to simply download it. And I'm not going to download all the formats because I don't need them all. I'm going to download the format that I need for my brother machine. And that is the PES version and it's downloading right over here. When it downloads, I will just click on it to open it. It's a zip file, and I won't be able to use the files yet until I extract them. So up here it says extract all, and I'll do that. And I just let it go to where it is, and I leave this button checked. So I'll say extract. So here are all my extracted files. So there's some thumbnails, a JPEG, there are terms of use, and in here are my PES files. And if I want to see these larger, since I do have Thumbnailer with Imbrilliance, I can right click on this and say View Extra Large Icons. And that lets me see exactly what's in that folder. Now, I have a much larger embroidery machine, but a lot of times I like using my little PE770. And I know Joan has a PE800, so I'm gonna use the five by seven one. So here it is right here and I'm going to click on it and it's going to open it automatically for me in Imbrilliance. So here he is opening up in Imbrilliance. So I'm going to come up here to this little compass rose and I'm going to say, I'm going to click on the one that says H for hoop. Let's see what's happening. Did I do the five by seven? Let's see what hoop size I have selected here. Cause that should have fit in my five by seven hoop, but obviously I must not have that one selected. So I want to show you another tip. Just come up here to the preferences. It looks like a file folder. Click on that. And when I click on hoops here, I see all the different kind of hoops that work with my PES brother machines. Now, I know that there's only a couple that will work with my 770 or the 800. So what I did on mine was this, because I always get confused with those metric numbers. I went ahead and you see where it says five by seven here? Yours probably doesn't say that. But here's what I did. Let's click on this one. If you'll notice when I click on that, it tells you what the size is right here. 12 inches by four. So what I did on mine was I said edit and right before those measurements I put 12 by four. I left a space and I said okay. So now you can see if I scroll through these I can see automatically that that's a 12 by four hoop. It really saved me a lot of thinking right because I could just scroll down through here and oh uh, there's my five by seven. Oh there's my four by four. Well, as you know, I need the five by seven. So I'm just going to say apply. And now my little guy will fit to the hoop as I had hoped. So let's scroll up like this. Okay. So now you can see if you come over here, let's X this out to the very right hand side. You can open up what makes up this guy by clicking on this plus sign right here. And that will let us see everything that makes him up. 
but why not go through the stitch simulator so you can really kind of get an idea of how this is going to stitch out. So you click on the little needle here and that brings up the stitch simulator. Then you come over here to the very left and click the plus button. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to draw a line of stitching that's the placement for my little snowman's face. And I'm going to pause that right now. So that tells me where I'm going to put the fabric for his face. After I place the fabric on, it's going to go around that again to stitch the fabric down into place. And then the next thing it's going to do, it's going to do the placement stitch for the band on his hat. So that's the placement stitch. Actually, it's for the whole hat, isn't it? the placement stitch so I know where to place the fabric for his hat and then it's going to do what I call the tack down or the material stitch that's going to tack down the material for the hat so it's going to continue on like that let's move this a little faster it's going to do the placement stitch for the band on his hat and then the tack down or the material for the star for his carrot nose and for his bow tie. Then it's going to come back and do the satin stitch for the white and the satin stitch around his hat. And all of that's going to go on right now. And that will be the end. Okay, so that's going to be easy peasy, right? But here's the thing. I said I was going to show Joan how to use her silhouette software so she can get the little pieces and cut them out just like that and not have to do all that trimming around stuff. So let's open our silhouette software. And as you'll notice, I have mine set up for my portrait machine because that's what I'll be using. But you go up here to the right hand corner and you can change this to however you need it to be. Now. I want to check something. I'm thinking that maybe we can do all this in the free version. Let's... Uh-oh, I'm thinking maybe not because it's not going to allow me to bring in a SVG, I bet. Let's see. View in and I'll say standard. So now I want to go to file and open. It's in my downloads. It's in this one. And let's see if it's going to let me open the PES. Ha! It looks like it's going to. So I open the 5 by 7 Nope. See, I can't do it in that version. So let's see, maybe I can do it in the next version, Designer Edition Plus. Let's try that and see. File, open, there it is again, open. Ah, so you need Designer Edition Plus to be able to do this. So I have links down below for you where there's a super place to buy this software if you'd like to get it pretty inexpensively and you'll be able to use it for all of your appliques. So the next thing you're going to do is this. You're going to start taking this thing apart like this because all you want is one piece. Okay, so there's one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking away this is the placement stitch, this is the material or the tack down stitch, and this is the satin stitch that I don't need. So I'm going to do that for all of these pieces. I don't need the satin stitch. I'll keep this because that's I need one and I'll get rid of this one. Again, I'll get rid of keep the red one and get rid of the black one. So for his face, we don't need these satin stitches. For his face, we'll keep the red, get rid of the black. For the carrot nose, we can get rid of those satin stitches, keep the red and get rid of the bellac and oh the bow tie keep the red and get rid of this black and of course the satin stitches and I don't need any of this either so these are the only pieces that I need to cut for my snowman and I'm gonna have these cut on my mat so but before I have them cut I like to enlarge them just a little bit so in order to do that I'm gonna go ahead and grab everything I just draw a box around all of it holding my mouse button down come over here to the offset panel it looks like a star with an offset on it I'm gonna say offset 
and I'm going to offset it by 0, 3, 5. 0, 3, 5. I found that number to work really well and hit apply. All right, now I've got to take these apart again. So what I want is I don't want this one, the single one, because that is the one uh, that's the original size. I don't want that. So the smallest one in the center is the one you don't want. Don't want the single one. Okay, want the double one. Don't want the single. Want the double. Do not want the single. Don't want the single. And don't want this. Okay, the next thing you have to do is you're going to have to uh, get rid of one of these lines. And the reason being is if you go to send, and even if you change this to cut edge, let's see if I can do this. Grab all these and say cut edge. It's still going to make two cuts on this shape. See that? Still going to make two sh cuts. Not exactly sure why that does that. So we're going back to design now. I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to right click and say release the compound path. And that's going to allow me to grab the innermost piece, the smallest piece, and delete it from our page or my page. And I can just delete these because I don't need them. All right. Now if we go to send, they're going to just cut like this. But here's the thing I want to remember. So if I'm going to make his bow tie a certain color, I want that in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to make the star a certain color. Oh, well, let's see. Let's put the hat up here. No. Let's put the star up here in the upper right-hand corner. Let's put the part of his hat half of the way down, half of the way down. Okay, here you can see I have all of my fabrics laid out and I'm going to spray them with a product called Terial Magic. It looks like this and I'll have it linked for you down below. This really works well. So you just spray them. Then you take your iron and set this and dry it with your iron. And while it's doing that, it's making this fabric be go from being like this limp to being like paper, like stiff. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some sticky backing on the back of this. I use Steam Seam 2 Light just because I was given a whole bunch of it. You can also use Heat and Bond Light, but like I said, I use Steam Seam 2. And what I'm going to do is take off one of the linings. So if I take off this paper, I'm left with sticky here. Take this off a little bit at a time, probably. And I'm going to start sticking these on here with the wrong side down on the sticky. And I will be cutting these apart then. Now, if it's repositionable, I didn't mean to overlap those. There we go. And then the last piece will go right here. Hopefully, it'll fit. Perfect. Like that. Okay, sorry about wiggling so much. And then all I'm going to do is take my scissors and cut this apart so that they're backed with this stuff. And then when it comes time, well, let me show you. So I'll just do one of these so you don't have to watch all, especially with my jumpy table. So here's this piece with the backing on it. I'll take the iron again and just go ahead and adhere that. Following the manufacturer's instructions for how long. Okay, and then once that's cool and I'm ready for this piece, what I would do is go ahead and peel this paper part off. So what I'm going to put on my mat is this. 
So here is my mat that needs to be cleaned off first. But I would put this like this on my mat with the sticky side down on the sticky mat. Okay, I'm going to start with the red that is his tie. I've decided not to put the pieces on here like I was going to originally. I'm just going to do them one at a time. I am going to do a test cut first because I'm not exactly sure what settings I have liked to use with fabric that is backed with the steam seam too light. So I'm going to go ahead and send this from my computer and I'm going to click on test and see what happens. a little bit of a problem with that okay that didn't cut out that well so I'm going to try another test and okay and I'm going to move this down a little bit oh, whoops wrong button with my left hand and from the side i want to move it in a little bit do that with your computer i forgot all right so let's try another test Okay, that test worked perfectly. Can you see that? That is perfect, exactly what I want. Okay, so now I can begin my regular cutting. And in case you're interested, with my machine, and it has to do with how old my blade is, but with my machine, I have the uh, knife depth at eight, the force at 22, and the speed at three. Okay. Yeah. going to say send. And here we go. Okay, let's see how well that cut. <gasps> Looks like it cut perfectly. So I can take that out. And this is good to go. So there's his bow tie, just like that. Perfect. Okay, let's go to the next thing uh, on my design. I have my next thing will be, let's see. I think I'll make my next thing be the star. So I'm gonna put that up in the upper left-hand corner as well. And the star fabric was going to be this. So I'll put this in the upper left-hand corner after I peel off the steam is seam too light because this helps it to stick really nicely to both my fabric when I'm ready and to my uh, mat. Okay, so I'm going to go with the same settings and just hit send. Okay, before I take it all the way out, I like to peek. Oh, beautiful. Take this off. I can save some of these for if I want to make another one. And take this off here. Perfect. Okay, next I will do about the hat. And then that's all I'll do for right now since you guys get the idea. The hat's going to be this. Okay. Uh, so let's see, it's almost five. Okay, so this is gonna be perfect. Again, I'll take off this backing. I don't need it. 
And I'll just put this down on here like that. Smooth it on. I could use a squeegee too if I thought it wasn't going to stick well enough, but my mat's pretty sticky and the steam is seem light too sticky. So again, I'll just hit send and send. And again, I'll take a peek. Oh, this one didn't do as well. Hmm, let's see if I can salvage this just fine. Yes, I believe I can. There we go. All right, so take that out. Perfect. A little bit of an issue there at first, but look at that. Nice, right? All right, I'll finish these up and I'll be back. Okay, I have my machine ready to go. And it's, I've already turned it on and now it says it's going to, the carriage is going to move. Then I'm going to go right here and look for my pattern that I want to use. And remember, it's the snowman, so I'm just going to hit this arrow to go forward until I see him. There he is. And I'll hit the up pocket to put it on my machine. And I forgot to tell you, I am going to use one more color of thread. It's a neutralist neutral color, but it's not actually white. I want to be able to see where my placement stitches go when I start this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And lock it in place. Okay. And it's going to stitch number one, which is the placement stitch for his face. So I'll put down my presser foot and stitch go. And while that's going, I'll find the face that I've already cut out. It's going to fit perfectly. Okay, I'm going to take that out now of the hoop. And... Uh, what I'm going to do right here is I am going to go ahead and get rid of those lines. Since I used the friction pen, I'm able to take my iron. Let's get this out of the machine though. And hold on. Okay. And uh, take my iron and just hit this with the iron and it goes away. So I don't want that to be accidentally left on there because I just needed them for placement. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this face and just match it up perfectly with these lines, just like that. And if I want to, I could be using my little iron that I have, my special iron that you've probably seen me use before. But remember now, this has steam seam 2 light on it, so it pretty much sticks right where I want it to be. If I'd like to, I could go ahead and add a little bit. But I think I'm okay just like this. So the next thing it's going to do, I'm not exactly sure why that hoop is getting caught up there. There we go. And it's going to do the, the uh, material stitch or another name for the tack down stitch. So I'll put this down and go. And the great thing about this is I don't have to take it out of here and trim any fabric away. But I'm going to do the next step, which is the hat placement stitch. It's already ready to go. So I'll just hit go. And I'll get my hat that I've already cut. Remember, it has the steam seam too on the back. Again, I'll remove this. And you can see exactly, hopefully, where the hat is supposed to be placed. So I'll take this down here now so I can be careful and place it right over top of where it shows it's going to go. Just like that. Look at that. Isn't that fabulous? I love it. And again, if I want to, 
I have that special little iron. I know you've seen me use it before. For some reason, I just didn't get it out today. But I could go ahead and go over this to really make it stick if I want to with my iron because that's uh, the steam seam too will really hold it in place. But now I'm going to do the tack down or the material stitch for the hat. Make sure nothing's underneath where it shouldn't be. <laughs> and then put my presser foot down and press go. And I could stop this if I want to and go ahead and get my little snips and snip off some of these, um, whoopsie, placement stitches or these lines of thread. Okay, next up will be the placement stitch for the little band that's going to go on his hat. So let me clip that and get a few of these out of the way. There we go. Again, that's the placement stitch. So I'll take this out of here. And snip this. Put my little piece on here the way it goes. And again, if I'm afraid it's going to move, I could go ahead and do a little ironing on it. I'm not, though, really. Okay. My iron's not even hot anymore. <laughs> I'll do the top down stitch for that. Again, making sure that nothing is underneath where it shouldn't be. And put my presser foot down and go. Okay, and now is the placement stitch for the star. But you know what? I think I can actually bypass that because I see exactly where the star goes. Right? See that? I can see exactly where the star is supposed to go. So I can take my star and stick it right in there like that. I want to make sure I have the right tip so that it matches right. That looks good. And I think I'll hit it with the iron. And that maybe got a little hot. Okay, now if you're wondering how do I skip a stitch, stitch if you look over here, see if I scroll in. I guess I can't from that angle. So uh, I go to this thing that says adjust, and then it tells asks me, well, what do I want to adjust? I want to adjust the plus and minus stitches. So I'm going to click on that. And I want to go ahead one whole step. And that would mean one whole spool. So I'm going to go like that. And it's taking it to the next one, which will be the tack down for the star. Uh oh. Looks like my needle became unthreaded somehow. So I better re-thread my needle. So number one, two, three, four, five, around this little hooky thing right there and through here, up here where it cuts it and thread. And now since it went forward a few stitches, I'm gonna make it go back one spool. So it, it'll start that all over again. Okay, the next piece is for his carrot nose.
press it down. Okay, after this, all we have yet to do is the bow tie and then all the satin stitches. Okay, here's my guy right here. Wasn't that a lot easier than going through here and trimming, trying to trim around each one of these pieces? I do have the link for the software down below for Silhouette if you're interested in getting it. I appreciate if you use my link, uh, but you can do a lot more with it than simply cutting out these applique pieces. Okay, for step number 13, it's going to do the satin stitch around the outside of his face. And then step number 14, as you can maybe see over here, that is going to be the satin stitch around his hat. So I'll do both of these and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, I finished stitching up to step 19, which means I finished all of the applique stitches. And this stitch is just a little bit different because it's not appliqueing anything. It's just doing the eyeballs and the mouth. So I'll put down my presser foot and start this. And there'll be one more thing to do after that. And that will be the whites of the eyes. Okay, this fella's all done and I'm super pleased with how it turned out. I might use the iron to get rid of a few more of these lines. I'm not sure if I'm going to put him on this thing now or not. I almost think he'd be a super cool pillow. But I can put them on here if I want to. And what could be fun is if I made various ones, they could be wall art and I could have them have different colors of hats and bow ties and whatnot. So I could just have a little placement of these guys. Or, like I said, I could make them into a pillow. But for right now, the only thing left I have to do is to get rid of those lines. The placement, or the, um, what's that stuff called? This stuff right here, friction pen. And take off the tearaway stabilizer. So I'll just hold this like this and just kind of tear it away. And since I'm not going to be washing it or anything, I can, don't worry about the inside part. If I wanted to, I could tear that out as well. But oh my gosh, you guys, this is so super duper cute and really, really well digitized. I don't know if you noticed or not, but sometimes instead of having a jump stitch, it would travel with a running stitch along here. So for example, it sewed or it satin stitched this part here, and then rather than doing a jump stitch all the way over here that wouldn't cut on my PE770, uh, it traveled with a white stitching that was hidden underneath the bow tie to start over here and stitch. Really, really well digitized. Love it. Nicely done. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me. Hey, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And hit the like button and leave some comments down below. I really love to read your comments. Also, we have a Facebook group just starting up in case you're interested in Facebook. So, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye.